Squawk Master Series uh, continues uh, across the pond this morning with a scientific investment expert who uses the financial markets as his laboratory after starting with only $2 million in 1997. His firm uh, now has a whopping $21 billion under management. Joining us now is the founder of Winton Futures, uh, David Harding. And welcome, uh, uh, Mr. Harding. It's great to, to have you on uh, this morning. I, I don't I think this is an inaugural uh, appearance, at, at least on Squawk Box. I'm going to start with just reading a, a systematic trend follower that believes scientific research in the financial markets uh, will work over the long term. I, I guess computers are used too. Could you describe uh, uh, just quickly how what, what your strategy is? Um, good morning. Yes, it is my first appearance on Squawk Box. Thank you very much for giving me such an appearance. Um, what we do is we trade a large number of futures markets, about 100 liquid futures markets around the world, and we go with the flow. We follow the trends in those markets. We take positions uh, on the long side when they're going up, or we try to take them on the long side when they're going up, on the short side when they're going down. And remarkably, uh, there is enough trending behavior in the markets so that we have managed to make money nearly every year over the last 15 years since we were founded. Right. So I, do I have you to blame for once oil gets started and nothing else is working, oil is going to go just keep going higher and higher, gold is going to keep going higher and higher? A lot of people blame trend followers for, for the pendulum swinging much further than it should on a fundamental basis. Well, I think, you know, there may be some, some truth to that, but, um, you know, we are limited in the role that we can play in the commodity markets by the United States speculative position limits, uh, which we conform to and operate within. So there's a limit to how big our positions can be, and they're certainly tiny compared to, you know, your major investment banks. It sounds to me, I, I, when, I, when I read a description of, of your strategy, uh, and I, let's go and talk about equities. I thought a scientific analysis might actually be a little bit bottoms up. And I, I, I'm now, after talking to you, I see it's not a bottoms up technique where you're looking at necessarily trying to do scientific research on, on earnings prospects or, or an outlook or, or trying to figure out the future. It, it, is, it looks like this is mostly tops down and mostly technical, no? I don't really recognize the distinction between, you know, fundamental and technical. We have a large team of scientists drawn from the dis disciplines like particle physics, cosmology, um, you know, bioinformatics, and they have great experience in those fields of using computers to analyze huge amounts of data. And, you know, what do financial markets consist of? They consist of huge amounts of data. So we employ people who use very, very modern advanced computing techniques to study that data looking for any patterns within it which we can use to make money from for our clients. Um, yeah, that sounds technical, though. I, I, in other words, you're not using your, your expertise in particle phys physics to look at the minutia of a nanotechnology company and try and figure out, out of the 50 nanotech companies, which one has the best technology uh, to, to satisfy the needs uh, of the future, say, 10 years from now. It, it's more based on trends. It's more big picture, that's certainly true. For example, you know, we would, instead of uh, merely buying shares in a company because it has an attractive price earnings ratio or a stable earnings growth record, we would actually quantify those things. We would evaluate, is there really evidence for investing in companies which have low price earnings ratios or low right. peg ratios or, you know, there, there are many assertions which most many investment managers put forward and they say you should buy this company for this reason and that reason we don't just go by gut feel we don't just make it up you know we actually go away and we evaluate whether or not price earnings ratio has a has a scientific effect in, in forecasting price and i don't apologize for having a rigorous uh, approach to investment analysis no, i like it i like it i also like 1997 i heard that and i heard science and i heard you've never had a down year and it just reminded me of long-term capital. They had Nobel laureates writing al algorithms, uh, a couple of them, I think. And I don't know if they ever had a down year. Um, I, I, I guess it's just ironic that you started that same year. Well, we, we, we have had a down year in 2009, for the, for the record. I started my first CTA, which is now the biggest uh, managed futures fund in the world, in 1987, actually. Um, so I've been doing this for 23 years now, and uh, my researchers required reading is when genius failed. The story of long-term capital is required reading for yeah, us. Yeah, uh, I bet it is. So when, when we're in the, 
when we're in the middle of explaining to people why it'll never happen to us, we always pinch ourselves and go away and read that book. You know, you can never be too paranoid when you're an investment manager. And I guess, uh, and I guess futures cover everything. You're talking uh, metals, you must be talking currencies, interest rate futures, um, oil, and, and I guess grains. Can you quickly give me like your best picks, long and short, that your computers are, are indicating right now in, in some of the major markets? Well, you know, I, I, I can't give you best picks because we don't have reliable ways of forecasting markets. We succeed by just going on betting and we have, you know, only a slight edge. So I wouldn't want any of your listeners or readers or viewers to, to follow uh, my ideas. But I will tell you some of the things that we're doing at the moment. Uh, for example, we're long of silver. We're long of the Australian dollar. Uh, these are markets that have been in long-running uptrends. We've been long of gold for 10 years, actually. Gold has been trending up, according to our computer, um, for the last 10 years. You know, it was, uh, it was $250 at the, what they call the brown bottom, rather, uh, unfortunately, which is where the British Bank of England sold the British gold reserves in 1998, I think. <laughs> $250, and it's now as $1,450 today. So 600% rise. That's a trend. Winton's been long for 10 years, 15 years, 14 years, 12 years. Wow, well, it just sounds like, it doesn't sound that much different, than, and then you put a stop in 10% below, and the trend has stopped, and then you're at it. That's the way you got to trade commodities, uh, I guess. Um, I mean, will you be able to tell when, it, when the party's over? You know, there's a history of trend following in commodities that goes back at least to the early 70s. When I started in this business 30 years ago, we studied stock charts from the 1970s, and we dreamed, back then, we dreamed one day you know, I know this is the opposite to the rest of the world, and you must excuse me for being an investment geek, but, uh, you know, we dreamed that one day trends would come back in commodities and we'd see the same kind of trends in commodities that there were in the 1970s. I guess you should be careful for what you wish for because those trends have come back now, and, yes, we are making money from those trends because, you know, that's the job that we do and that's what I study to do and, and uh, uh, over all those years, so it's not, it's not surprising, but... Uh, this is not the first time in history we've seen these kind of commodity markets. The 70s were very similar in many ways. I know those, those expressions like, please let there be another real estate uh, boom because I spent all the money I made on the lead. And I've heard those commodity guys saying that for a while. Well, as you know, once you are a master of the market, uh, you are always a master. So uh, we hope to, to see you again. And you can come back with the, uh, uh, the same moniker, same title. Uh, hopefully you'll do that for us, uh, David. Thank, thank you very much indeed.